So this project I like to call surface design because what you're going to do is you're going to find um, a subject and you're going to be designing the surface. So these are some examples and you can access this through Artsonia and these are samples from Sparta Middle School. Uh, they are of shoes and backpacks. I, I pretty much kind of uh, inspired the kids to kind of say try to stick to um, an object such as a shoe or a backpack and the reason why these things work is because the surfaces are ultimately flat as opposed to a shirt would, or shorts or something which would have a, like a lot of wrinkles. You're looking for flat surfaces and a couple of different spaces as well. So you would have different components of the backpack, for example, like you would have the face and, and there would be different pieces of material, the pockets um, and the different sides of the backpack. And, and the same thing with the shoe, the shoe, especially if it's like in this kind of um, position, it could certainly just be a little bit more simple. If it's on an angle like this, um, you know, you have different components, you have the laces and you have the pattern that's applied to here. So, you know, it's complex enough, but uh, also simple enough. So you want to try to avoid anything that has like a lot of wrinkles, like I said, like a piece of material, but something like a shoe or a backpack, that's going to be perfect. If you have any other ideas, please share with me. But um, so the very first thing you're going to do uh, for this project is you're going to be finding your subject matter. The subject matter should be a shoe or backpack that is not black or white. So I realize that a lot of sneakers, they come in white. So you want to avoid finding something in white. So that might mean that you might need to find something that's in leather or um, in a color such as gray or red or blue. Um, and also avoid black. And the reason why I'm saying that is because when you start to apply those patterns on those spaces, the patterns will not show up on black or white. So when you do a Google search, when you're looking for your um, subject that you want, let's say that I'm looking for a Converse uh, sneaker. So you're going to go to images. So again, you want to avoid ones that are black or white and you find a lot of those, but you want to try to find something with a color. So you want to change the, the settings over here. You change the, uh, you go to tools and you change the size to large. So as you're looking, you find a shoe that you may want to use. You're going to right click, open image and new tab. It's okay if there's more than one shoe in the picture. A lot of the times you're going to find shoes with white background. That's completely fine. Now you can see that the sole is white, so you may not be able to put a color on here or a pattern on here. Just be aware of that, but you certainly have a lot of surface over here that you can use. So you, you're going to be uh, creating the illusion of a pattern in this space. Now if I asked you how many different pieces of material of canvas do you see in here, you'd say you see one here. Um, now there is a stitch and I think this is just for design decoration and also to sew two pieces of material together but I still think that this and this are the same piece of material um, and the tongue is a separate piece of material. You see a little sliver right here of that third piece of material so um, I would say you have one two three spaces inside I don't think you'd be doing anything to the inside. Now this is something to consider when you are looking for um, your subject. Avoid um, images that already have a pattern applied. Uh, you want to find something that has a flat color. So you want to avoid anything that already has an existing pattern. Uh, they could be little kids. Now this one is very similar to the blue, that, blue one that we just saw. Open it in a new tab, get nice and large. But um, the point of view is a little bit different, right? This is more straight on. And you know, you consider one, two, two pieces of material for this. You might have a little bit of a sliver here and a little sliver here, but for the most part, uh, same kind of uh, idea, but uh, just a different point of view. So you're gonna be finding your subject. And when you find your subject, you're going to save this image so you can work with it in Pixlr. So you're going to be downloading it into the 
desired filter. Hopefully you figured that out already. Um, so that is the very first step. Find your subject. If you're looking for something like a backpack, same rules apply. You're going to be finding something that is not black or not white. Uh, high resolution image. So again, when you go to tools, make sure you're on large. So something that has a color besides black and white, completely fine. If they have straps on it, that's great too. If it's more simple, that's okay as well. And it's okay if they're multicolored. Okay. So after you're done picking your subject, but you want to put the patterns and change the colors on, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to be finding your patterns. So I literally just went to Google. I Googled up cool patterns. And I'm going to change it over to images. If you have a certain pattern in mind, if you want to do an animal print or um, it's like a tribal print, or if you have something in mind, you can certainly go ahead and make more of a, uh, a detailed search. But for me, I was just kind of just finding something that's kind of cool. This might be fun for monsters, something that would be good on the subject. Here's a nice vivid tropical. And once again, I'm going to encourage you to stay away from um, the black and white um, patterns. You can certainly go ahead and download them and try them. You can, um, when we do this process, you're going to be able to switch out uh, different patterns and try out different things before you go ahead and you really start getting into it. So you'd be able to see how it's going to look pretty quickly before you go ahead and you start uh making it uh, a lot more detailed and, and you know, really get into the project. Uh, so certainly go ahead and save images that you might be unsure of, such as do they really feel strongly about this uh, zigzag kind of print or this kind of print and it's black and white, give it a shot, save it. But also save something as a backup. My, what I find to be best are the ones that are very, very brightly colored. Those seem to be working out really, really well. So I'm going to go to Tools. I go to Size Large. Some of these images have watermarks on it, meaning some of them have a print. Let's see, I think this one does. And it has an already, like a, they call it a watermark. And there's no easy way to get rid of the watermarks. But if they do bother you, uh, you can change the usage rights. I find that labeled for reuse with modification or any of these other ones seem to eliminate those watermarks, but it's also going to lessen your search. You're going to find less images to to use. So uh, if you find that uh, you're having a lot of problems with this watermark sort of thing, select one of these others. So once you find one that you like, this one's kind of nice. It's all like this one. It's a little good on a backpack. Um, you're going to right click. Do the same process, open image in new tab, and you want to get it so it fits, uh, it's really, really large on the screen, and you right click and save image as, and save it into the folder uh, where you've been saving all of your images, which is pro uh, Google Drive, I believe, or it might be just in a downloads folder. Right now I'm just saving stuff on my desktop. Okay, so first thing you do is find your Subject, second thing you do, you find um, a couple of patterns. My suggestion is to find a couple, just so you have a couple as a backup. Now we're going to go through the process of putting these two images together and having the pattern on top of your uh, subject. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to be opening up uh, the image of your subject. Hold off on getting the image of your pattern. You'll be putting that on later. So this is your uh, this is my sample anyway, and I can see that, you know, kind of come up with your game plan. My game plan is to have the pattern applied to this space right here. And I also want to put the pattern up uh, in this space, as well as this little sliver up in here too. So um, I would need a piece of pattern for here, and I would need a separate piece of the pattern for here. These would be two separate layers. I could cheat a little bit, and then since this is a little sliver, it'll be hard to see the pattern in the first place. Um, I could always just borrow a piece of pattern from either one of these for this little sliver. Okay, so you're going to be opening up your pattern. Uh, you're going to open it up as a separate layer. So you're going to hit the plus sign in layers, and it's you're adding the layer. You add the image, and this is when you're going to find the pattern that you want to work with. So let's go with this one. 
Okay, so now this pattern is sort of facing you and it's very vertical, very horizontal. But if this pattern was applied to this shoe, you can see that it would be angled, the position would be different, and it would be coming uh, like sort of up to the back. So you would have to mimic that. Before you do anything, uh, if you recall, I was saying I need a couple of patterns. I need a piece here and I need a piece here. I'm going to make two um, layers that are the same. I'm going to duplicate this layer. So I'm on the Arrange tool right now. So I have the duplicate right here. I could just click here. Or if you don't see it, you can hit Duplicate right there. So uh, I'm going to make one invisible. I'm not going to be using it right now. So I'm just working with one. So the next step is you are going to angle this, as I said before, and you're going to change the position. So it's it kind of takes on the same angle as what is behind it. So it is hard to see. So for some people, you might want to lower the transparency of this layer. So we go back to the layer settings, lower the transparency so you can kind of see what you're doing. And you don't want to lower it all the way. You don't see your pattern but you want to lower it enough to kind of get the general idea of what's going on behind it. You can always put that transparency back. So now what we're going to do, we go to Edit. Now we have Free Transform, and that doesn't really do anything except change the size of it. Free Distort is a, a bit more comprehensive, and it's what we're going to be looking for. So you can see when we move the corners, they all they move uh, independent of one another. So this pattern, you can kind of get more of an idea of what is happening here. Now, just as I was working, I noticed that the transparency end of it went away. I don't know why, but what I'm doing is I'm first of all making this pattern bigger than I need, but I'm also making it angled so it. Like I said, it kind of mimics what's going on over there. So making it look like it's going back in sort of the same angle as, as there. And that looks pretty good. Make it bigger than you think you need. Make sure that it's covering the entire area. Okay. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. So there we go. All right, and then you hit apply. Okay, oh, the transparency went away. So, you know, it, it really does look good. I can see how that is going to look like it has that illusion that it is angled. Much better than what it would have looked like if I left it alone. All right, so that's that step. So the next thing we have to do is we have to trim up, cut away all of the part of the pattern that we're not going to use uh, from like the sole of the shoe and on top of the laces and in this background here. So we're going to be revisiting a tool that we've used before and it is the the cutout mask tool. So if you recall how this works, we can use the draw cutout and what and I'll just do it really quick over here and if we remove from cutout, if we go on top of this, it's removing the area we, we uh, do not want. And if we want to put it back, we can put it back uh, using the add to cutout mode. So I'm going to do it a bit quickly and I'm going to remove it by using the lasso tool. And I am going to go around here really quick. Laces I'll get when I zoom in. So that's pretty good. Okay. So I got rid of the parts that are really close. And I'm going to get rid of some of this. Other. Oh, it acted in reverse. I'm going to hit invert for a second. Yeah, that's better. So what I did is I, when I went to invert, it switched. Like what I had set up is it removed what I wanted instead of removing what I didn't want. It was the opposite. So you can always play around with that. I learned that just kind of recently. Hitting invert, if you make that kind of error, will switch it. Okay. So you can start to see how this is going to be. 
and as I cut out more and more, you can see it's really starting to look pretty good. Now this is, you know, the transparency is still um, pretty low, so it's even going to look better. So you want to go ahead and get rid of all of the stuff you don't want. It's just the stuff on the one piece of material. Okay. So I'm going to pause this. I'm going to get really close in here. I'm going to zoom in quite a bit. And this is when you might want to use the brush tool and add to cut out closer areas. Now, just as a reminder, when I start to brush this, I want this to be a nice, uh, hard brush. So you want to bring the softness down to zero. Also move that step down to zero. And you are putting this back right over there. Nice and clean. Make sure you, you don't want that pattern on that metal grommet. Grommet? It's either a grommet or a grommet. I think it's a grommet with a G. I don't even know if grommet's a word. I'm sure you guys will tell me. Um, all right, so you can see I'm going through this. So uh, I'm going to put this, the recording on pause, and I'm going to jump back into this after I have this all selected. Okay, so if you zoom in, you could see I went and I got really, really close to the subject, and using the cutout, I was adding and subtracting from the area the pattern. Ooh, too, too small. So you just want to do this pretty carefully. Okay. So after you have, you think you have everything selected and everything looks pretty good, um, what you're going to do next is bring back that transparency up to hundred. So um, this might show you that you might have missed uh, some areas. For example, I see over down here, I totally missed an area right here. So as soon as I just grab that real quick. Um, and like the last project, you can always go back later on and fix it up later. Um, like I don't need to spend the time and do this now if I don't want to, but it's not this won't take very long, but you know you can always fix it up later. Okay, so what you're going to do to this layer next is you are going to play around with the blend modes until you find something that looks good. The two blend modes that you might have explored them in the last project uh, that that work well. Uh, the two blend modes are overlay and color. Personally, overlay works pretty good in uh, in the pattern. So you, all you have to do is go to back to your layer settings and you're going to change the blend mode from none. You're going to change it to you try overlay. Okay. So when you change it to overlay, you can see if you zoom in, you should be able to see um, the pattern, of course, but you should also be able to see like the the um, texture of your surface. If you have any shine on it, you'll see the shine on there. So that should look pretty cool. You might be unhappy with the way it looks and it might be because of the transparency. So you can always lower the transparency a little bit to just tone it down a little bit. You can also try from overlay. Um, some kids use screen and maybe they find that screen looks okay. But the thing is you want this to have the illusion of having that as a um, as a pattern applied to the material. So you don't want it to look just like this where it's just like cut out. You want it to look authentic and realistic and, and you know Photoshop. Color is another one but color the problem is is that it it kind of mixes the color. It'll mix that background color of your pattern with the back with the what's behind it. So in this case the lavender so, you know, it depends, right? It, it might look good for some of you guys, and it does look authentic. It does look like that pattern's color has been printed on there, but this might just not be the look that you want. So uh, after you do that, a couple of things you could modify, let's say I want to stick to this, 
is um, you could go back and you could mess around with the color of this pattern. So I'm going to go to image. Oh, I'm sorry. I go to adjustments and I can go to hue saturation and you can play around with the hue of the pattern. So you can see that it will change the look of your design if you start messing with hue saturation and even the saturation and lightness and you just find whatever kind of works for you with this assignment. Now the one downside to changing the color you have to be aware of. The problem with changing the color is that when you change the color it's going to also change it's this pattern is now not going to be the same as the one you made a duplicate copy of so, so I'm going to change it to none and I'm going to move the transparency up so you can see once I um, just bring it back to normal for a minute that this pattern is not the same as this pattern it's changed it's changed with color and stuff like that so some people what you might need to do is you might need to make a duplicate layer instead of doing it at the beginning and it's not a big deal because I'm gonna do the same thing I'm just gonna delete this one I'm gonna duplicate this layer okay and what I can do with this is that I can put it in place where I want it to be I might need to retransform it because this is gonna go on the tongue but what you can do with this is that you could add and subtract as you need to just to show you what I'm talking about so you can see I can bring this pretty much back to normal um, from when it was um, you know I can get the whole sheet if you would if I keep working with this and you might need to retransform this in order for it to look proper in that space so let me go back to here I am going to lower the change the blend mode back to overlay and I'm gonna move the transparency down a bit 75 because I think I like that better um, and then I'm gonna put this into place once again I can lower the the opacity on it um, I can make this layer disappear for a minute and all I'm working on right now is is the tongue layer so I am going to put everything back here so I'm going to go to shape cutout and I'm going to go with this whole big square so you can see I'm bringing bringing back the whole thing I can go back to edit free distort and then I can go ahead and, and kind of change the angle again so it meets with the way that I want this pattern to look it should it should be a bit of a different angle it should look a little bit different than the than the other one I just had it's going to be the same pattern but you can see I'm kind of finagling it if you would finagle is an old person's term My mom used to say finagle so you know, just gotta play around with it and you just want to try to see if you can get this to kinda ooh, be in that position that you want okay so I am going to quote unquote finagle and I'm gonna come back
So the very last piece that I wanted to share with you for this project would be adding color. So while it might be difficult to add color to some of these spaces, um, because the areas that I would want to color that are left are white, you know, the laces, the sole over here, the edge, the top over here, but we're going to have to play around with it. So to do this, you're going to make a new layer. So you hit the plus here and it's going to be an empty image. So what you're going to do is you're going to use the brush, the regular draw tool, pick a color, pick a color, make sure it's bright, kind of obnoxious, you know, and I'm picking a color that is in this design right here. You know, perhaps I want to use like that pinkish, orangish kind of color. Um, so you could see when I move my cursor outside, it's going to go ahead and start selecting colors that are in the design. So if you do pick a color, just make sure it's a little more vivid. So I made that red a much more vivid than what I would be uh, having over there. So then when I use the brush tool, same kind of thing. I'm going to move the softness down. I'm going to move the step down. Uh, the one benefit to using the brush is if you use, um, I think it's the, yeah, it's the period and the comma. The period makes it bigger, the comma makes it smaller, so you have that as a shortcut. So basically you're going to just brush the color on top, and as you usually have been working, you are going to be zoomed in to that space. And like I said, the one benefit to this tool, the, bra the draw tool, as opposed to the, um, the cutout mask tool is that this permits you to make change the size of the brush directly with the shortcut keyboard shortcut and again it's the the period and the the comma so like I said unfortunately it doesn't work with the other one the draw tool so I'm gonna Kind of like start it off here by hitting a couple of these spaces and you just freely color it in. So now we're going to change the blend mode as we did before. So you hit the three buttons next to the, the layer. And whereas normally I would suggest using color, you could see when the colors blend together um, that that white really, really makes that pink color diluted. Now for, you know, some of you guys might like the lightness of it. When you get into these shadowy areas, it's going to come out a little bit better. But I would play around with the modes a bit. You can try darken. Now the difference between having it darkened and going to none is that you can see that the texture of the lace is through it. And that's the look that you want. You can also further do that by lowering the transparency a bit. Now that looks pretty good. That's not too bad. Well, I think I'm just going to continue working in that in that fashion. So again, just now the thing is you gotta you're in a different tool than you were used to before. So don't forget you you can't just hit the shift button and undo what you did. You're gonna have to go back and use the eraser. So the eraser tool's right there. The shortcut's E. You gotta set up the brush on your own and move the step down. Actually, you'll need the softness about, I don't know, 5%. You can see how that looks. I'm going to erase a little bit and see. You know, if I make it like 5%, I actually almost like that a little bit better. It gives it a little softness without it looking too fuzzy. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to apply that to this brush. What did I say? Okay. So, again, you're going to jump back and forth from brush to eraser. Now, there are shortcuts. This draw tool, the shortcut's the letter B. You can see that on the bottom there. And the shortcut for eraser is E. So if you keep your fingers on the B and the E, you can go from brush, uh, brush to the eraser. Okay. And the brackets make them bigger and smaller. So yeah. So you, you can add your color. And I would like you to add your color as a final step as well. You won't have to worry about this until the very, 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 very end. Alrighty. That's it.
Let's see what it looks like far away. Oh yeah, I kind of dig those those laces. Very very cool. It's actually kind of enjoyable when you do it from a distance. Let's see if this works for the sole too. Yep, works for the sole as well if you want to wear the the toe. Um. So yeah, that is what you're going to do. You're going to add some color. Now, one last thing that I'm going to talk about before you go is imagine if you, you change your mind and you're like, I don't want this little peachy color. So let's go to adjustments and go to hue saturation on that layer 4. And you can change change it to whatever color you want. It could be more like that. You can leave it like that. So it's up to you uh, how what, whatever color that you want. Make sure it's part of your your palette. Make sure it's not anything that's like completely off the mark. Uh, in my case, I would probably stick to blues, maybe some this red again, uh, maybe this teal, dark teal color. I don't know if I would introduce another color completely different, like a yellow or something. I don't know if that's going to be too overpowering. But, you know, just make sure your decisions are pretty thoughtful. Okay? Have fun. I almost forgot. So, imagine if I change the color to this and I'm really enjoying it. Now, if I go back to the brush tool, what happens is if, if I start brushing again, it's going to keep that original color I had. So if I decide to change the color by using hue, hue saturation, I have to go back and, and sample the color again. So this is not the color. I go back to this layer. I have to change the blend mode from dark to normal, or the blend mode from darken to none, and I have to bring the, the transparency up. This is the color I'm using. So I can use the eyedropper tool or I can just go to this foreground color picker and go right on that space there. Okay, that's the color I'm using. So then I'd have to go back. I'll change it to darken. Um, I'll move the transparency down the way that I had before. And now if I go ahead and I use the brush it's using the same color. Okay? So you just want to make note of that, that you, if you change the color, you have to reset the color, your foreground color right here. Okay?